Hello and welcome to the Long Island Pawnee Power Show. We're here at the Colonial Springs area, as I like to call it. Uh, and yeah, I actually went to the meeting today. To the uh, so I spoke, and I'm gonna. You're gonna hear the speech while I'm here in the Pine Barrens. Uh, I'm gonna make it for you. Uh, but uh, this is a beautiful spot, as you can see. Look at all these delicious shapes here. And you know, unfortunately, it wasn't addressed. So I'm gonna actually read to you my speech as soon as I find a spot we can set up for. Uh, this is a beautiful spot here, Pine Barrens, that's just east of the Pine Lawn Cemetery. And it's very beautiful here. And we have a very nice day. Again, a second nice day in a row now. Yesterday, uh, no video, but I did the nice hike in New Jersey, but I did not take a video. I don't take a video of all the hikes like I used to. I just, you know, like I said, I don't want to... It's not that I'm quitting YouTube or anything, I just don't want to go at the pace that I used to go at, you know. So, we are going to check out, it's around 2 o'clock, we'll be here for about an hour. And we're going to just check out some of this beautiful scenery here. Watch the mud. I was worried about the mud. Don't like the mud. Because of the, all the precipitation we've had. Oh, just look at this. Look at these beautiful pitch points here. Oh, man. Gorgeous. Alright, so we are continuing on here. On this path. I'm going to check out a really nice area that you could really... really feels like you're in Jersey when you're in this area. And we're going we're gonna to check it out. So while we walk over, I'm going to read to you my speech. Uh, walking and reading at the same time. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. <laughs> Actually, I just realized. It's too difficult. I can't. The thing about us guys, uh, we have trouble multitasking, so I have to actually stop walking. Look at this. Man, that's beautiful. So I want to just go to this spot. It's going to look like we'll walk. We'll do a little loop. We're going to walk along the south. We'll take a loop, and then we'll walk up that way to go back. So do a little loop here. Yeah, I could have spent the whole day here instead of wasting my breath with those those that MTA board, which is really just a bunch of uppity, snobby people who are just like the people on the Babylon branch. That's why they don't care about us. All right, so we are coming up upon that spot right here. And what a beautiful spot it is. And you can see we've got these old pitch pines here that look like just the kind you would see in Jersey. Uh, because, again... It, it, when they get old, this is when they form these quite interesting shapes. You know, you can see there's a beauty over there, there's a beauty over there. Uh, and yeah, I will, we will get to the speech in a bit, but uh, let's just enjoy this for in the meantime. Check this out. <laughs> That's beautiful, right? All right, so uh, you'll, you'll see in another separate video, we'll talk about how the uh, my train experiences went today. Um, look at that one. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll talk about how my train experiences went today, uh, but uh, on the way here, we had an issue. Yeah, how's that for a beauty? Um, signal problems, again, on the main line. Uh, service was suspended for a little bit. My train was delayed about 10 minutes. It's real nonsense, I'll tell you that right now. And we're going to talk about it, but uh, we're going to talk about the me meeting and all that stuff. And I saw a lot of, uh, I tell you, I saw a lot of unfair loading at Jamaica. I mean, you have literally, I saw three, two or three of these Babylon train flyers pass, you know, passing through Jamaica. They're, they're empty. And the trains that are stopping, they're all jammed up. Anyway, uh, yeah, look at this. I'd much rather be here than waste my time with that MTA board. And really, it was a waste of time. There you go. That's... It's funny how sometimes you see pitch pines, and they seem to like to have a grouping of three sometimes, which is kind of interesting because you get these groupings of three beautiful pitch pines. And the interesting thing is pitch pines also have... There goes a train right there. 
we're right next to the tracks. Um, the pitch pines will always have their needles in groups of three, but it's also interesting that you often get three pitch pines together like that, which is uh, really beautiful. And that that's a real beauty, that tree right there. And we got beauties all over the place. Here's two more. Uh, you know, these are, these are the kind you see when you go to New Jersey, but we have them here too. It's just that when pitch pines, New Jersey is more of, of older pines than we do, but we have areas, we have older pines too on Long Island. And this is, this is a perfect example of it. And you can see just the amazing, uh, just amazing uh, scenery here it is really quite breathtaking. Okay, so I figured I'd tell you about my speech and read it to you right here in the Pine Barrens. Uh, and unfortunately, Joe Loda was not there, uh, uh, but Patrick Nowakowski was, as well as the MTA board. Dear Mr. Chairman and board members, I am pleased to see many construction projects going on across the Long Island Railroad. But I am here because I feel the performance by management, Mr. Nowakowski in particular, has been abysmal. It has been almost a weekly occurrence when there is some service disruption on the Long Island Railroad mainline, the busiest part of the railroad that carries the Ronkonkoma, Port Jefferson, and Oyster Bay branches. Many can no longer rely on the Long Island Railroad to get places on time, if at all. It seems that the Babylon branch always gets the most service, the most attention, and rarely has catastrophic shutdowns like the main line. I have noticed a shift in the months and years since Patrick Nowakowski replaced Helena Williams as Long Island Railroad president. New concrete ties out to Merrick, while wood ties rot on the Huntington and Ronkonkoma branches which are always plagued by preventable issues such as broken rails, signal problems, and poorly maintained trackside utilities. And while things that happen are, while some things happen that are out of the Long Island Railroad's control, it is how they are handled that makes matters so much worse. When service is shut down for hours, why are there no buses provided? Consider all the hundreds of dollars every year many Long Islanders send to the MTA and how ridiculous it is that the MTA cannot send some of the thousands of buses it owns to help us out. And now, when there's planned work, you have the goal to put riders on school buses, which are not meant to transport adults. And getting to that planned work for the next three weekends at Harold, it seems once again, only the Babylon branch gets to keep most of its service. It's hard not to see the favoritism by the railroad toward this mo mostly homogeneously white collar upper income branch. You are violating Title VI laws by your neglect of the main line, which carries more passengers than any other part of the railroad. And I live in Mineola, which is one of the busiest stations in the railroad, yet we are treated poorly in this service change. Our service is cut in half, and no one seems to have the logic to have Ronkonkoma trains stop at Mineola when Huntington service is reduced to hourly. I do not want to ramble on. You need to do right by all Long Island Railroad riders and replace Mr. Noah Kelsey with someone who will look out for every part of the railroad, not just the Babylon branch. And I also have printed out photos of some of the conditions on the main line that need your attention. There were four photos that I printed out. Uh, I gave it to whoever the uh, moderator was. Nobody commented on them. And they, basically, they were the photos of the stuff you've seen, the rotten wood ties, the cracked concrete at, Mi at Mineola, um, uh, the, the rotten wood ties, you know, and, and other conditions that are across uh, the air. You've seen all the pictures. I figured I'd share them with the board in person, but no, they didn't comment on one of them. And no one criticized Mr. Nowakowski. Not one person. Not one person said anything about replacing Mr. Nowakowski or about the condition of the main line. They just talked about general service disruptions. I thought the railroad needs to do a better job at communicating. Uh, they need to, you know, fix the infrastructure, but they never referred to the main line in particular. Uh, they did. One board member did ask why the Huntington branch has uh, not enough service, and it was explained that, and rightfully so, that there is a yard. There is no yard at Huntington, so that is something they have to work on in the future. But no one criticized Mr. Nowakowski. Not one person uh, really talked, and they were talking about a lot. They, they talked about, you know, projects. Uh, uh, one of the ladies said, uh, "Mini Oler is our key station." And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. It's your key station. She's like, oh, it, the trains run so often at Mineola, you don't even need a schedule. Well, during this track work that's going to be going on the next three weekends, lady, uh, you will need a schedule because they're only going to be running once an hour, except for the Oyster Bay train. So uh, it seems like they're completely out of touch with what we're going through here on the main line. They're completely out of touch. 
You have a bunch of, even, Van oh, what her name is, Vanderpool or whatever, she's with the Tristan Transportation Committee. I thought maybe she would speak up for us. No one spoke up for us. I was the only one. I was glad I was there, but I'm not going to another board meeting again because you could see clearly we are not heard. They do not care what we think. Uh, I did what I could do. Uh, we need a change in Albany in, in the state because right now that MTA board is beholden to the upper class people who use the railroad. Uh, and they're focused also on the city, so they don't really care that much about Long Island. And that was one, uh, one of the senior board members did bring that up. It seems like the city is getting a lot of attention compared to everybody else. Um, but there was not enough criticism of Mr. Nowakowski. There was no criticism of Mr. Nowakowski. Uh, and Mr. Nowakowski admitted, well, I made, him, I made some mistakes with the communication. Man, we've given this guy chance upon chance upon chance. He ain't doing anything. He ain't going to do anything. And then I, the ironic thing is, so I'm coming back. I get on the 1214 uh, Ronkonkoma train. And we get to call, we get to Mineola, and it's announced that there is a, a service suspension due to signal problems at Hicksville. Here we go again. Perfect example of what I just talked about in my speech. Nowakowski claims, oh, there's going to be money to fix this. You know what? It's all going to go to the Babylon branch. Let's be honest here, right? Belmore and Merrick are getting their... Conquer they're getting their... Uh, they already have beautiful stations, and now they're going to get Wi-Fi. It's like they're going to be gold-plated train stations, while the rest of us have to deal with broken rails, signal problems, and constant delays. This is a public transportation system. So, yeah, I might rate it was a waste of time, but I at least I know I tried. And uh, that, that's pretty much how I feel about it. Uh, and uh, I think that the MTA should be ashamed of themselves. And I think if we cannot change this, uh, then we need to remove the MTA from the Long Island Railroad. I know now I'm sounding like Mr. Mangano. But listen, hear me out, all right? The MTA doesn't seem to care, all right, anymore. And I think that we need to, uh, as much as I don't, I, I can't stand nice. Like, I'm not a fan of them. But you know what? Even Transdev could do a better job maintaining the main line than Patrick Nowakowski can. All right? It doesn't mean I want them running the railroad, but I'm just saying this. The MTA doesn't take us seriously. And maybe it's time that we form our own transportation authority here on Long Island, I talked about this years ago, to run the trains and run the buses and not have the MTA involved anymore because they're so focused on the city and they're so focused, it seems like Long Island, because we're an island, we are somewhat isolated. And they seem to treat us that way. And I'm disappointed, as far as all the board members, I'm disappointed in all of you for not even looking at the pictures or commenting on it. Uh, these are dangerous conditions aren't here on the main line, especially with that cracked platform at Mineola. Yes, I know it's going to be replaced uh, when, the, when the third track project, but, you know, it's still a danger that needs to be fixed. All right, look at what happened in Florida with that bridge collapse. You know, uh, is that going to happen at Mineola? It very well could. At least I have the pictures and the video to document it. So if it does happen, we'll know who to blame, and that'll be Patrick Nowakowski. And the other thing is that, you know, look at the work they are doing in stations like Hicksville. I mean, it's... Hicksville looks like crap. That's the other thing the lady's saying, oh, Hicksville's so nice. The, the video's online. I can pull it up. I'll criticize it in another video. But, I mean, you got to give me a break. They, they're completely disconnected. It's just like what, what happened with the way our Pine Barrens are treated. Look at what happened at uh, Connecticut. Now, Connecticut River State Park used to look just like this. Used to look just like this. But the state took too long to act to stop the pine beetles, and we lost a lot of the pitch pines there because of it. All right? Same thing. This is what I'm saying. If we were our own state, we would make the Pine Barrens our national treasure. Our, our, if we were a state, we would make the Pine Barrens our state treasure. Right now, New York seems to neglect the Pine Barrens, and they treat us as a stepchild and not a treasure. And that needs to change. That needs to change, and that would change if we were our own state. No longer would the Pine Barrens pay second fiddle to upstate and the mountains and the Adirondacks. No. The Pine Barrens would be our state, Trevor, if we were our own state. All right, so we're back in the open area now. Um, we're gonna be leaving here in about a half hour, but I'm not done yet showing you some of the beauty here. We have some more great shapes over there, so let's check them out. All right, it's the other spot that I wanted to show you. It's beautiful of you. Just gotta watch, there's a lot of green briars and vines going on the ground, so. But we have some beautiful shapes here. I just wanted to show you, before I head on out, I just wanted to show you this one spot here. It's pretty freaking amazing.
Great shapes here, man. Great shapes. All right, we're heading west to the tr toward the trail, but I don't like what I see. Look, take a look over there. That tree looks like it might have southern pine beetles. <sighs> because of the warm winter, you know, it was off to a great start. It was cold. We had that cold weather in the late in, the, in December and early in January for two weeks, and then the winter was over. You needed cold to kill those beetles, you know. Anyway, I gotta make my way out of this spot here. It's a pain to walk around because of all the you don't see it, but there's lots of little briars and stuff on the ground. That's a beauty. It's a beauty. Beautiful. Hey, look at that seedling right there. It's a seedling growing right there. Number of seedlings in this spot. Yeah, take a look at all the seedlings growing here. Here's some more. A whole bunch of them here. It's good to see. These look like brand new seedlings, too. Probably maybe a year old or less. That's good to see. It's always good to see uh, reproduction. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video. I didn't want it too long a video, but... Uh, Wow, beautiful day. Two, two beautiful days in a row. It's a rare thing the way it's been lately. Anyway, I hope you can understand why uh, I'd rather be here than dealing with those sharks at the MTA. I'm trying to, that sharks is a kind word, trust me. I could say worse. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Thanks for watching. And remember what it's all about. You know what it's all about, man. It's all about those great shapes.